Hi folks, this is Rick Price. Jack Jones. And you are watching Live on the Lot. On Skippy TV. Well, all the leaves are brown And the sky is grey Well, I've been for a walk On a winter's day And I'd be safe and warm if I was in L.A. California dreaming On such a winter's day Stopped into a church I passed along the way Well, I got down on my got knees Now pretend to pray I pretend to pray You know the preacher like the preacher he knows I'm gonna stay. Knows that I'm gonna stay. California dreaming. California dreaming. Of such a witness day. are brown and the sky is gray well I've been for a walk on a winter's day and if I didn't tell her I could leave today California dreaming California dreaming on such a winter's day California dreaming I'm such a winter's day California dreaming I'm such a winter's day Hi folks, I'm Rick Price And I'm Jack Jones And you are live on the lot On Skippy TV This All is right. our, was this our little version of uh, this James is, Taylor classic Yes, Fire and Rain from our California Dreaming album Lovely Which is out now, available on uh, all formats yes. Go to your local record store <laughs> <laughs> Alright Oh Just yesterday morning, they let me know you were gone. The Suzanne, the plans they made put an end to you. I walked out this morning and wrote down a song. Just can't remember who to send it to. Well, I've seen fire and I've seen rain. I've seen sunny days that I thought would never end I've seen the lonely times when I could not find a friend But I always thought that I'd see you again Won't you look down upon me, Jesus Gotta help me make a stand just got to see me through another day My body's aching My time is at hand And I won't make it any other way Well, I've seen fire and I've seen rain I've seen sunny days that I thought would never end seen her lonely times when I could not find a friend But I always thought that I'd see you again I've been walking my mind to an easy time My back turns towards the sun 
Lord knows when the cold wind blows, it'll turn your head around. But there's hours of time up on a telephone line, talking about things to come. Sweet dreams and fly machines and pieces on the ground. Well, I've seen fire and I've seen rain. I've seen sunny days that I thought would never end. I've seen the lonely times when I could not find a friend. But I always thought that I'd see you, baby, one more time again. Thought I'd see you one more time again 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 Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Live on the Lot. We've got some uh, Australian music royalty here, uh, Jack Jones and Rick Price. Welcome, and uh, thanks Hello, for coming mate. on the Thank show. Thank you, thanks for having us. Yeah, um, <coughs> guys, congratulations on the new album. Thank you. Sounding Thank amazing. You. Yeah, nice. Um, so, I have to ask you, how, how did the idea come about? Actually, uh, the original idea uh, came from a book called uh, California Dreaming that was written about uh, all the artists that had sort of gathered in that Laurel Canyon, West Hollywood area, um, actually through kind of the 60s and the 70s, there was a huge sort of um, incestuous uh, group, you know, yeah, really sort of, um, sort of set up there, you know, writing songs and, you know, really sort of recording music uh, that so no one really had, you know, they were the forerunners of that stuff mm. in many ways, the mamas and the papas, the yeah. birds. You know, Johnny Mitchell, all those guys. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, that's, it's a, that, that's an actual non-fiction book, is it? Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, I, I can't remember the author's mm -hmm. name, but uh, that was actually at the root of the inspiration. That's for right, the, for the genesis. Yes. Okay. When I first came across the album, what jumped out at me to begin with was, you know, it's such an iconic period of music. Mm. Um, so was it more a, a question of what not to record? You're right, that time, that time of music was, uh, I mean, there was a lot of great music. Mm. Um, so what narrowed it down, or made it easier to narrow it down, was that California dreaming uh, or dreaming, like incestuous group of artists. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone was kind of interwoven in each other's lives. You know, yeah. Na Graham Nash, Joni Mitchell, you had James Taylor and Joni doing BVs uh, on like uh, a Neil, Neil, Neil Young, Young record, song. Yeah. Okay. There, you know, there was a genuine community that existed. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. and definitely. they all used to kind of hang and write and collaborate and guest on each other's records or. You know, you know, the Eagles with Linda Ronstadt's backing yeah, band, okay, Jackson right. Brown and the Eagles, you know, wrote Take It Easy or yeah. Jackson Brown started it and Glenn mm. finished it. You know, so there was, there was a, lot of, uh, a lot of a sense of all these artists being sort of interwoven and connected with each other. So that was the first kind of tier. And then the second tier was like, all right, let's find, you know, four or five songs with each artist. And then it really culled down quickly once Rick and I started sitting down and playing together. Yes. The minute that happened, it, the songs just yeah, like it arrived. Yeah, we'd get a couple <coughs> of minutes into a song and realise, you know, this this isn't going to work, mm -hmm. or you know, there'd be the obvious choices, and right. and we always knew that it was going to be. Well, we were hoping that it would uh, it would turn into a live uh, show, yeah, which okay. it has, and so we kind of stepped the album out in that way, you know, yeah. so that it would. Yeah. Uh, it would kind of work uh, yeah. in a live setting. Before you went into the studio with some of the tracks that you'd selected, did you have you know, any strong preconceived ideas on how you wanted to sound or did it come out through jamming? I think we, you know, we didn't want to, as Rick would say, drift too far off the reservation. You know, yeah. we didn't want to go too... I read too, that quote somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> we, we really didn't want to, you know, to make the songs obviously unrecognisable. Mm. There are certain key elements to the songs that we, we felt were, mm obviously should you know remain mm. even things like quotes in solos and stuff you know mm. 
Mm. Other songs we we uh, you know we don't have a flautist in the band, so that made things yes. easy, you know, <laughs> things like that. So uh, <laughs> you know, yeah. God, <laughs> but, uh, why not? Against no, of course we love no you flute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, and and it was, that, was was that line sort of hard to walk? Was it? We, did you feel times you you wanted to? Drift further left or right with no, things? No, not or? at all. We knew we had the flexibility to to really <coughs> do whatever we wanted. You know, there's no uh, there's no uh, restriction on that when you make a a, record, a cover record. But uh, we, you know, we really felt like there's a there's a beauty and a you know an authenticity to the original melodies and arrangements. And you know, we didn't really change that much unless we we uh, you know sort of wanted to put our own flavour to it or felt it was necessary, mm. like. Uh, with California Dreaming, we you know we changed the introduction and you know, so at different times a couple of little changes, but uh, I think doing the album in duet style had uh, you know brought a lot mm, of our own mm, sound to it in, mm. in that way. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. So Rick, I understand you produced the album in, in, in your studio in mm -hmm. Nashville. Um, Rick, in terms of producing, do you do you do much producing for other artists besides yourself? I do. Yeah. Yeah. I. Uh, I, I seem to find myself, uh, you know, in the last few years doing a lot more than, uh, than I have before. So it's, yeah, it's a thing that I kind of flip between, you know, my own writing and recording my own music and, and writing and recording and producing for others, which I really, mm -hmm. I really enjoy. We had Shane Nicholson on Skippy TV the other day and he said he's doing a lot of producing and how he's grown to love it because it allows yeah. him to be in, the, mm. in music all the time. Right. Have, mm -hmm. have you found that? Yeah, most definitely. But I think, you know, say for this record, the difference was, you know, obviously Jack uh, is an incredibly <coughs> intuitive musician and we sort of, we partnered really uh, on this record. I got the, you know, the title or the hat to wear, you know, that said producer, but really that role is, you know, just making sure that, you know, the coffee's hot and get all that. <laughs> you, you were the executive producer. Coffee was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Executive producer, that's not that cool. You know, it's yeah. a production role for me is just about putting beautiful uh, musicians together, you know, people that, that just play, you know, uh, that are the right kind of musicians for, for what we're doing, which we discussed, you know. And which you did a stellar job of, I must oh, say. I mean, that was, that was a great... Wrangling people. It was amazing. Like, yeah. mm -hmm. I mean, for me, it was great because, you know, we'd sit down, we'd knock out a bit of a, bit of a song and we'd get a, a form and... You know, that, that was like the first week of the process. <clears throat> but then second week was like people started rolling in. Yeah. And Ricky was like, you know, yeah, wait till, he, wait till Fred shows up, you know, he's the drummer. You know, like, and I'm like, oh, yeah, cool, yeah. He plays with da, 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 da. And they'd be like, yeah, and Steve, uh, Steve's playing bass with me. I think you'll like him too, you know. And I was like, oh, my God. Like, it was fantastic. And then, you know, then two weeks down the track, you know, I'm sitting there and there's Dan Dugmore playing Pedal steel. Yeah. I was about to say that the pedal steel sounds he, beautiful. You know, he's yeah, an he's phenomenal. iconic. I mean, all these guys have uh, they've played on uh, records that you just you know that you, uh, phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And uh, and one of the one of those great experiences of that of that time was just sitting there and just crying while Dan was playing mm. on Blue Bayou. Yeah, it was wow. just like, is this really happening, man? Like looking over at Rick, Rick was turning around. He was like. It was so cool, it's wasn't amazing. it? Like he was telling us, uh, he he played the original Peter <coughs> Steele solo on, on Blue By You uh, for Linda Ronstadt. Mm. So he was replicating the same <laughs> solo and we're just wow. going, oh, man. Yeah. Uh, but he, Quite surreal he was, to be there in that moment, wasn't it? Oh, That's exactly amazing. what it was. And he yeah. was telling us stories about, you know, recording with Neil Young, which and he toured with James Taylor for years. So he was really, uh, you know, he was one of the band guys that were, uh, and side men that were around in those... Uh, he had some yeah, stories. Yeah, I was about to say he has some stories. He's got yeah, some stories, man. Some great stories. And particularly about that time, mm. you know, because he was, he was uh, you know, fair, well, he was In very involved with, yeah, yeah with the, mm. the artists of that period, you know. And there's, there's like the 60s, uh, I guess with, our, with the record, is there's like the 60s side, like side A. Like we made it like an album, like mm. side A and side B. 60s on the first, and side A and side B is like the 70s. Yeah. He was definitely a a part of that 70s um, mm. the experience, you know, with JT and stuff. I mean, it's mm. just, it's hard to, it, it is surreal. You sit there and you listen to it and you're like, Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's fantastic. Yeah, it was yeah, cool. It was good. Um, and Rick, you've been based in Nashville for quite a while now. Yeah. Um, has Nashville influenced your music, you think? Look, um, I don't know that, it's, it's sort of like, you know, your hair grows and you don't notice it every day, you know, but it, one day you wake up and you, your hair's longer. Uh, oh, that might be a bad analogy, but you Where's know what I mean. Where's your long hair gone? Yes. Well, I was going to say, I woke up one day and there was, wasn't any hair anymore. So I guess it could kind of be like that as it well. It can go the other way, mate, just as easily. Uh, but it's something that I, 
you know, that sort of happens in degrees, I think, you know, slow increments, small increments. But, yeah, definitely. Uh, being around, making music with different musicians will always change the flavour of the soup, so to speak. Mm. So, and that's really the, what the whole expedition for me to Nashville was about. I knew that that was going to organically happen and, uh, and I wanted to create that. You know, I wanted to be in that environment where I could learn. You know, I've, I've, been, I've learned an enormous amount living in Nashville. It's like playing tennis with somebody that's just great. You learn a lot, your game gets better. And, mm. You know, so it's a little bit of that too, you know. And I just follow my nose. I mean, I could have just as easily ended up on the Gold Coast or something, you know, and just really wouldn't have mattered. I just, you know, I sort of follow where I feel like I'm meant to be. But Nashville is great. I'm having a great time. Yeah, fantastic. Mm -hmm. And now moving on to the tour, you've both had some huge hits in the past and mm -hmm. played in front of some, some big audiences. Um, hitting the road with these songs, do you think it'll be any different to playing your originals in the past? Oh, it's going to be different. I don't know. Yeah, how. I'm not quite sure how. Yeah. Um, have, have, but, you, have you tested? Tested the album in front of a, a live crowd, yeah? No, we are, yeah. we are, what's interesting about the tour though is that we're playing the record in its entirety, like from top to tail. Okay. And we're also playing our previous hits, but we're doing them in a similar style. Well, I, when I say similar style, I don't necessarily mean like in the genre, but we're breaking up the songs and singing them together. Okay. So we're singing each other's songs together, which is kind of fun. Yeah. For me. Yeah. I mean, it's fun for me because I've always wanted to sing um, yeah. Rick's songs. <laughs> yeah. like, it's nice yeah. to be able to, for us to be doing it together, you know? There'll be yeah. some s swooning ladies in the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, you know, we hope so. <laughs> right. Before we wrap up, guys, where does everyone go to buy tickets and find information about the tour? There are several ticket locations. There are. Um, one is my website, rickprice.com forward slash tour. Uh, you can come there and, and uh, all the links and all the information. So that's a one-stop shop there. But you can also go to Ticketek. Mm -hmm. uh, that's right. I um, think Ticketmaster also has some. You can, go to the, uh, right. you can go to the TG website. You TG can get on Facebook. Uh, mm. You know, but, uh, but Rick's is probably the most, at the moment, the most concise mm. means of finding every date because yes. there's been a little conjecture as to, you know, who to get tickets from for a, some of the venues are selling direct as well. Yeah. But, you know, if you, you hit Rick's site, you'll, you'll be sure to get it. forward slash tour. And your gold, mate. Your gold. <laughs> there you are. Tickets. Okay. All the information. Whatever you want. Okay. T-shirts. Yeah. <laughs> well, merch out yeah. So there we have it, guys. Um, make sure you get out and grab some tickets. You will not be disappointed. They've just played it in the studio, and they're fantastic and uh, as tight as ever. So, thanks, man. gents. Thanks for having um, us, brother. All the best, and thanks for coming on live on the lot. Cheers. Awesome. Thank brother, you. Thanks for having us. Yeah. All right.